demonstration of the Geospec mud logging system. Uh, the instrument itself stands eight inches tall, it's 18 inches wide, and 18 inches deep. As you can see, it's got the ventilation uh, cutouts on the side, and it's made of solid steel. It's a uh, very rugged construction. Uh, on the front here, you have the flow rater for the total gas coming into the unit. And you have a switch, which switches from normal to calibrate, and that's just for this test gas inlet, uh, where you can actually put your calibration gas up to the front and switch it and leave your bubble jar connected to the back. Now, speaking of the back, on the back of the unit, we have a power cord receptacle, a USB receptacle, and And we have uh, hookups here. If you're not using wits, you have common depth, pump one, pump two, and on off bottom. You also have uh, carrier air, gas, and two exhaust lines coming out. I'm gonna take off the lid here and show you the inside. On the inside, you have uh, that acquisition board that's flashing. Um, this is just a special geospec board that it hooks to. Um, your sample pump, power supply, infrared chamber, uh, chromatograph column, and your filament chamber for the chromatograph. Okay, Scott, now I'm going to shift gears and go over the geospec software some. Uh, you can get into the Geospec software by double-clicking this red Z, and it'll open up to Geospec 1507 or whatever the latest Geospec is at the, at the time. Uh, we, uh, we update those quite frequently. Um, it opens up to this menu screen. Uh, it'll have five buttons, and you'll see these same five buttons across the top of every screen inside of Geospec. Uh, you also see you have 365 days left on the hardware key and a way to extend that. Uh, most mud loggers will uh, go to the logging screen and that's where they're going to get their information. And they'll leave it on this screen while they're drilling. Uh, you have the depth, uh, estimated TVD, lag depth, gas, ROP and feet per hour or minutes per foot. You have one foot intervals for your ROP, two foot averages and five foot averages. You also have on off bottom and uh, they can be set to manual or automatic uh, but if you're using wits there's no reason not to leave that on automatic. Here's your strokes per minute and you can uh, click these pumps on and off if you're not using them for any reason uh, just by just by clicking the top of the pump. Uh, here's your total strokes uh, for pump one, two, and three and your lag strokes. You can move this slider over if you have a washout and uh, it'll increase your lag strokes and uh, it'll also tell you what percent washout you have. Uh, on the, on the, these two vertical uh, graphs here, the one on the left is ROP, the one on the right is uh, lag gas. Uh, and you can see the lag line is down here because that's uh, the depth that the gas is coming from. And, you also have some alarms here that you can set. Uh, such we have the one for high gas set. And uh, speaking of gas, let's go on over here to the calibrate screen, and I'll show you how to calibrate your gas detector and chromatograph. Uh, you can do both of those from the calibrate Chrome screen. Uh, the top uh, left-hand portion of the screen is for total gas, and this bottom. Uh, part of the screen is for the chromatograph. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some calibration gas to it and just see where we're at on our calibration. I have a bottle of 1% uh, uh, methane, ethane, propane, butane, and isobutane, 1% uh, of each. So you're going to see a pretty high total gas reading and then it's going to do the chromatograph breakout. And I have my switch up to calibrate, if you can see it. Uh, 
And so I'm going to put the gas in the in the front here. Now you should start to see, here it comes, an increase in gas. Our gas alarm is going off. Hi, guys. And uh, we're going to let that gas get on Hi, up guys. here a little bit. And it is, so we're going to take a manual sample Hi, on the chromatograph by clicking this button. Hi, and it'll take a five second sample of that gas. And then uh, we're done now so we can turn Hi, our test gas off. Hi, guys. High gas. High gas. You can see the gas uh, reading is pretty high. Uh, we got a blend of five gases at one percent, so that should be 500 uh, 500 units of total gas here, which we're way too sensitive. So let's back that off. Let's back it off some more. And the way I'm doing that is I'm clicking on the sensitivity and just typing the number down. And let me set the scale up to 500 since so that's, well, let's set it up to 1,000. And I did that by clicking this uh, scale button and uh, just typing in the number 1,000. So that's, that's still too sensitive. So uh, 10... These infrared sensors are very, very sensitive. And that's about right, right there. And as you can see on the chromatograph, you have methane, ethane, uh, the propane's going down right now. And uh, we'll just have to wait on uh, butane and isobutane. Okay, here comes the isobutane. And uh, that's the butane. We're just going to have to wait for them to come out. But you can see it's breaking the gases out just fine. Let's go ahead and uh, go over to Calibrate. And I'm going to show you our, uh, our logging. We'll go to Exports. And you just check uh, what data files you want. And, uh, for example, on one foot ROP, you'll get a spreadsheet or a CSV file which you can read in a spreadsheet program uh, you'll have you'll have depth and then the ROP beside it and you'll have that in feet per hour or you can check minutes per foot or you could literally check both if you ever had a reason to do that and there's one uh, two foot uh, averages and five foot averages also if you want to do it and then uh, we have a uh, we have capability to log TVD and uh, five foot averages uh, log time, uh, you can set this interval, but what this does is uh, it creates a spreadsheet with all the drilling parameters every X number of seconds. So uh, it's kind of like a backup. The mud logger never uses it, but sometimes it's uh, useful, so we usually leave that hooked up. And we have uh, other things checked here. Uh, for example, this unit doesn't have a CO2 detector or a dual sensor gas analyzer, so none of this needs to be checked. Uh, really, all we need is the chromatography on one foot intervals, so I'll just uh, I'll leave that unchecked. And the way you uh, get to these spreadsheets is you go back to the computer's desktop, and there's a folder called Geospect here on the desktop. You open it up, and uh, this can be opened up in Microsoft Excel. I happen to have Open Office on this computer, but that's fine also. So if we wanted to go to uh, the one foot feet per hour, it's it's very descriptive spreadsheet. We'll go here, open that up, hit OK, and there you have your depth and your ROPs in uh, one foot increments. And the same, yes, we did. Uh, I'm going to increase the scale over here so we can see it better. But uh, you'll, every time it takes a sample, it'll throw a, the, your last chromatogram over here and freeze it. Uh, so your loggers can look at it. 
It'll also, uh, now we've got a running total of uh, the percentages, and they're, uh, they go along with the total gas. So if your total gas increases, these percentages also increase, but they maintain their relationship to each other. I'm going to just put a butane lighter to the total gas so you can see that happen. So now you see the gas coming up, and you can also see these live corrected uh, chromatograph readings coming up and how they maintain their, their original ratio, but they just go up and down with the total gas. And uh, you can do that in units, which we have checked here, or you can do it in percentage. Scott, there are a couple of more things that I want to go through uh, with you before I conclude this demonstration. Uh, the first one is that data entry. And this is just a screen where you enter your ODs and your IDs of your drill pipe, casing, liners, so on and so forth, and your pump information so the geospec system can uh, calculate lag. Uh, this is also where you enter the last survey information. Uh, you enter the measured depth, TBD, and angle of the last survey, and Geospec will track, uh, you know, until the next survey or the angle changes. And it'll keep track of TBD that way. Now we're going to uh, come over here and go to general settings. And uh, this is how you configure widths. And it's pretty easy. All you have to do is make sure everything on the left-hand side of the screen here is set to width, such as widths, depth, SPM and your total strokes are set to simulate slash calc from SPM and you can hit your configure button the only thing you need to change in here ever is a COM port and in this case it's COM8 we'll save that go click on the terminal button and see your live data streaming from the rig computer and uh, also we're streaming out uh, the gas to the computer and everything seems to be working there, so we're going to close that out. And with that, I'm going to conclude this demonstration on the Geospec mud logging system. Uh, if you have any questions at all, Scott, feel free to call me at 409-771-3574. Uh, you can email me at mike at geospec.com or go to our website at geospec.com. And uh, thanks again for uh, viewing this demonstration.